Hey guys, Ryan here, and Hasbro have come through with a delicious set of Lightning Collection Rangers from the 2004 12th season of the show, Power Rangers Dino Thunder. The series that finally brought dinosaurs back into the mix also brought Tommy back as a full-time ranger, even if Jason David Frank was more part-time due to other commitments and New Zealand being far. So how has the set that started in 2020 come to a close in 2023? I'm going to tell you all about it with five things to know about the Dino Thunder Lightning Collection. Number five, Trent. The slightly elusive Walgreens exclusive, though not as elusive as In Space Silver, was how we kicked off the team around September 2020. One of the figures, with a slightly different box backgrounds as exclusives tended to have back then, Trent, the White Ranger of Dino Thunder, was a fun way to kick off the team. However, there was one thing immediately incorrect about him. It almost seems like once all design decisions are made, a swiper comes along to save Hasbro a bit of their budget back that they want for profit. They took Zack's Morpher's red outline on the basic figure of him, despite the armoured version they did first, having it. They took Rocky's Tonfers from his figure release after showing us that he was meant to get them. And from this, they took the black visor outline on Trent's helmet. Now, I have no proof on Zack or Trent. It just seems very likely. Of course, the box itself didn't get the memo as both the Ranger artwork and figure render on the back looked more accurate to the actual design. So the black outline got swiped so last minute that everything else still showed it. Hasbro responded the right way and started their first helmet replacement program to fix the issue. You basically had to send Hasbro an image of your figure with the dodgy helmet beside a reference number they'd provide for you. By this point, I'd already tried to fix it myself and learned just how hard it is to draw a tiny thin line straight without wobbling. So I hope that gave Hasbro Customer Service HQ some laughs. They then posted you out a corrected helmet, though apparently this service didn't extend worldwide, so some unlucky fans would have been able to buy the figure, but not receive the fixed helmet. By the time of team completion, some people say the helmet fix program is still being offered, while others say they've been shut down by Hasbro saying that all the stock of it is gone. It makes you wonder how many they had made and how they were distributed globally. To be fair, I did have more than one for myself as the first fix introduced a whole new problem whereby the red pterodactyl eyes were now misaligned. One was higher than the other. The one I kept did need a bit of black marker adding, but you know what? It's good enough. Trent also kicked off a trend the rest of his teammates would follow of needing a bit of paint adding to their morphers and gloves, though for some reason, Connor's gloves were the only ones done right and had paint on all four of them. Once you have Trent's head fixed, it's interesting that it matches the box artwork and render so perfectly, you can just kind of forget about the head that was a blip and what a mistake that all was. All in all though, this was one great figure. I particularly liked the special effect piece being made to resemble his arrow attack from the series um, when he first attacks the main trio. Very cool. That was a really great addition that made sense for how special effect pieces could work really well in this line. They could be unique, necessary, and actually look good. Number four, likeness light. I think my biggest takeaway from the Dino Thunder team are that the heads have been the usual sort of split of good enough and way off. Now I can forgive Ethan looking a bit hypnotised or possessed, I can forgive Tommy looking a bit too old, I can even forgive Kira's wet mop hair. What I don't think I can ever get over is how they did Connor dirty. They made this guy look older than his older teammate Tommy. He's something of a Team America World Police puppet. I feel so bad for him because this is almost a caricature gone wrong. It definitely must have been an off week or someone with a nihilistic sense of humour when this one got sculpted. It makes me kind of hope for a Triassic Ranger release somewhere down the line, which would enable us to hopefully get a second stab at Connor's likeness, hopefully looking his actual age from the show. But for now, this is all we've got. And so ranking the heads, I would go number five, obviously Connor. Number four, Tommy. I mean, it's completely acceptable and as ever, I'd rather something than nothing, but this one feels like another in a long line of Tommy misses. I do keep flip-flopping between it's okay and it's not. I put it at four because it feels like more of a missed opportunity than the others. 
Number three, don't call her Kira, at least not with that weird hairpiece. The hair is distracting for looking quite so odd, though the face seems okay. Kira got off relatively easy. Number two, Ethan. Personally, I do see a decent likeness here. I just think it suffers from that earlier printing that they did on the eyes that made them look a little unnatural. It's okay though, one of the better ones. And number one, Trent. Close one definitely between Ethan and Trent, but Trent doesn't have the distracting eyes aforementioned for Ethan. And I really like the hair, the expression and the skin tone chosen here. More like this, please. Of course, the real winning likeness of this season's figure array has to go to Mezagog. But as he's not human, it doesn't really seem fair to lumber him in to the same category. Don't worry, we'll get on to him shortly though. Number three, Fighting Spirit the Third. Dino Thunder is one of only three teams without a sixth ranger, along with Alien Rangers and Jungle Fury. But technically, there have still been six ranger releases you can count for this set, even though one of them is another in a Mighty Morphin branded box. And it kind of works for it. It's the Green Ranger from the the fighting spirit episode that saw Tommy subconsciously battle three of his four previous incarnations in order to get back the black dino gem fragments and awaken from a coma for some reason. Fighting Spirit Green was infamous because those jokers at Disney unwittingly updated the Green Ranger helmet with a silver stripe on the top. They changed the gold power morpher buckle to silver and they changed the dragon dagger holster from black to white and put it on the wrong side of the belt. There were other little changes too, but they're the main things to look out for. Release versions of the infamous alt Green Ranger look have come thick and fast since 2014 with the Power Rangers Legacy 5 inch figure boxed up alongside the Mighty Morphin figures, but with a graphic that did acknowledge its place in PR history from much further down the line. Then again in 2017, as a Power Rangers Legacy 6.5 inch figure, it was exclusive to the New York Comic Con Fighting Spirit set, and it got a metallic shade at that. And most recently as a 6 inch figure, double packed with a Season 1 Putty Patroller during Year 1 of the Lightning Collection, actually way back in summer 2019. Technically, it's therefore the true start of the Dino Thunder figures, even though it relies on the Mighty Morphin team to sell it for them. So we never got a figure of this suit for 10 years, and then we got three of them within six years. If you have seen my Mighty Morphin Lightning Collection season one and sort of two team review, you'll already know that this is in some ways a better Green Ranger figure than the single carded release that came out in wave seven because of having white diamonds on the body under the shield and additional paint on the dragon teeth outline of the visor. So my two, Frankenstein together. All in all, while I've had my fill of this thing being so prominently released now, it can be fun to pose him against Dino Thunder Black. And yep, you can bring in your regular Mighty Morphin White and Zia Red to join the party. Luckily, their suits weren't radically changed for the episode. Otherwise, this would be quite the collecting saga, wouldn't it? The putty, given the two-pack that followed on from this, it seemed like an odd choice then, given that you would want to army build and not just collect a stack of Green Rangers as well, just to get your putty army. Though actually, in today's secondary market, having a stack of greens to sell through, Fighting Spirit version or not, would be quite a lucrative operation. The other oddity was the putty being so obviously Mighty Morphin and the box label for Tommy being so obviously Dino Thunder, well sort of if you know your references. Double packs usually keep the two characters from the same season, though admittedly not always. It's still a slightly odd choice now, so if Fighting Spirit Green ever felt like an odd fit beside your Mighty Morphin figures, remember this could be why because he was always a much better fit with your Dino Thunder figures. Also, as much as I prefer them to include civilian heads, it could be argued this was one case where one wasn't really necessary. Fighting Spirit Green is a ranger who never takes his helmet off. He's not even a real person, I guess. Hasbro were clearly trying to get people's buy-in at this initial entry point for the Lightning Collection and not tick them off. I basically just re-ran the version that had just come out with the Wave 1 White Ranger for this release. It is fun having an older Tommy appearance, and not too old like Lord Draconold. This one, as you'll probably have seen on my Instagram, Power Rangergram, 
quite nicely doubles for the goatee version of Tommy we saw in the Season 21 Legendary Battle during Super Mega Force. So pop it on your Green Ranger and enjoy. I do hope that we'll get a Master Morpher final appearance Tommy at some point. Maybe they would do like a convention set with a broken helmet Dino Thunder Black final JDF head sculpt. Hopefully a good one this time and maybe a tiny Master Morpher accessory like the remastered MMPR Power Morphers get. Just an idea though. Number two, Woo and Boo. So a big pro for this set is that you get each ranger's signature weapon. You don't always get these in Lightning Collection, or sometimes they decide to do other weapons instead, looking at you Lost Galaxy and Dino Charge. So Connor gets his Tyranno Staff, Kira gets her Terra Grips, Ethan gets his Stego Shield, Tommy gets his Brachio Staff, and Trent gets his Drago Sword. It's not all great though, because a big con is that just like Zeo and in space, the weapons don't combine. You would expect at least the main three to have the ability to with their weapons, but no, you're left out in the cold needing to go third party again if you want to pull off the combined weapon finisher pose. I think that's such a shame. Mighty Morphin did it so well, but since then, they just haven't been bothered and it doesn't seem like they have any desire to be either for future releases. Another pro, to a point, are the Thunder Max laser blaster and swords that you get for the three main rangers. Another con is that yellow has no sword despite red and blue getting them with their figures. I guess it could be because her terror grips are two weapon pieces rather than one like the boys get, so her accessory count was equalized another way. I just think it's a shame. This really could have been a great set had they just made things more consistent. Ah, it's that thing I always say. You're left needing to solve this another way if you want each of your main trio of rangers to have a Thunder Max Saber. The other thing we just have to talk about is how badly the holsters fit the Thunder Max lasers. I'm seriously considering cutting the blaster holsters open at the back because this isn't what's meant to happen. It's not how they're meant to look. I'm just worried though that it might not hold the blaster. Has anyone tried this already? Please let me know. And while I have gotten into the cons, let's talk about the decals change. So the Dino Foot logo is significantly smaller on Tommy than say Connor and Ethan and he is actually a slightly smaller figure than those two as well. You can see this reflected too in his buckle being sized smaller. It's very strange. For the main trio some of the helmet visors have come in silver rather than the white like the rest of their suit. They've been doing that a lot in the Lightning Collection and honestly it really needs to stop. Back onto a positive, the five Rangers Morphers are at least all unique moulds. A shame they're unpainted, and as mentioned, I have painted my White Ranger one, and I do intend on doing the rest. So follow my Power Ranger 2 Patreon, where I'll keep tracking the outcome of that experiment. And number one, main villain number four. After Zed, Rita and Astronomer, it's very nice to get a leading villain again. Mezagog had an odd release alongside Dino Thunder Black in Wave 14. I'm not knocking it, but part of me wonders if this was originally intended as a double pack that perhaps got changed last minute to some same season figures in one wave. It has happened sporadically, but yeah, a very heavy hitter of releases. Of course a shame both of them were in the windowless era of the Lightning Collection and that their boxes don't match the rest of the set in any way, even down to the size of them, but alas, it is what it is. At least I had two less figures to put back in their boxes for this review. Anyway, Mesogog, as with the rest of the Dino Thunder figures, represents a big improvement on the original Bandai America figure versions. Side by side, the improvements are stark, which I love and reminds me of how good it was when we had, say, Wave 1's Lord Zed, how that was significantly better than anything we'd had previously. Mesogog has an opening jaw, interchangeable open and closed hands. Yes, the nails are a bit distracting, aren't they? And some cool special effect pieces for the hands. It's good because it gives Dino Thunder someone to fight and someone significantly tied to Tommy and to Trent. Actually, I guess there's uh, quite a lot of baddies in this set. You've got Fighting Spirit Green, you've got the initial version of Trent or perhaps the dark clone of him if you're the type of person that wants to have two. It does feel weird not currently having a foot soldier when they've been establishing that for several other seasons, but I like how compact this team has been to complete. 
And as someone who never had any Dino Thunder merch until the Legacy Edition Black Ranger a few years ago, and then some Megazords, this seems to be one series that's been pitched right in duration and releases. Having said that, would I still buy a bunch of two packs of Tyrannodrones and Triptoids? Quite likely, I'd say. So those are the things I think you need to know about the Dino Thunder Lightning Collection team. They're a great set overall, a team I can certainly recommend having in spite of the criticisms I've just laid out. What do you guys think of them, and what do you consider still to be missing from this season's set? Do let me know in the comments section. Yeah, we've had a raft of Lightning Collection team completions lately. I'm not really doing them in order of when I completed them, but don't worry, we will get through them all. It might just take me a while, so I hope you'll subscribe and stick with me as we do that. And so, yeah, until the next time, I'll see you later.